So here we go with Rohrer und Klingner. Alt Bordeaux. Let's start with a bit of fine writing. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Bit of medium writing. Quick brown fox. Jumps over. The lazy dog. Bit of broad, blood, blood. No, bl I, I was going to say bold, and then I wanted to say broad, and then I combined the two, and then I got blood. I'm very strange. Jumps over the LD. And then finally, a bit of italic writing. Lazy dog. All right, all right, all right. Then we do us some flex writing. Holds up pretty well, I would say. Nice wet ink. Let's start to do a couple of passes, shall we? And a bit of fat writing, because nothing beats fat writing. B for Bordeaux. And while we're at it, we may as well do a bit of medium writing. And I'm willing to bet that this writing is not yet dry. No. A little bit wet. All right, well, then I suppose we need to engage in that one moment that you have all been waiting for the Tardif test. I have to say, I don't find that the most spectacular of Tardif tests I've ever seen, but the ink doesn't really stick to the blade. What can you do? What you can do is do something completely different, and that is... The Brown Benchmark! 
Now that, I must say, I do like. I'm just uh, cleaning my finger there a bit. All right, I'm just going to close up the sample vial. OBKB. I think we can do a second pass. Okay. This is dry too. That means we can have a look at the bastard brush. Alright, so what are we seeing up to this point? Um, there's a couple of things that I, I, I like about this ink a lot. First of all, flow seems to be very good. Uh, I don't have any issues, not even with the um, the flex pen. Uh, and I also like the shading. It's not an excessive shader, but there definitely is some nice shading going on there, which I which I definitely appreciate. Um, that's coming along well. Okay. Uh, some nice, it, it's a very unique color. I have not seen this in another ink. And that's why it was quite diff diff difficult for me to um, find a good comparison ink. And I don't think I succeeded entirely, but um, you'll see that a bit later. So I like the shading, I like the, uh, the, the, the very good flow. It's a very fascinating color. It's, it's Bordeaux is awfully well chosen. Um, Okay, I think we can do a final pass there. And then uh, maybe we should uh, have a look at the uh, scorecard for this ink. Um, I think we can start to do that while everything is drying here. So let's have a look at cleaning. Never had any issues with a um, raw and cleaner ink. Bleed through we'll have to assess later. Color. Bordeaux. And right now I think I'm just going to enforce that a bit just so that it's dry so that we can do the eyedropper. And while that is going on, we can have a look at the shading. Shading is a good middle score. Flow, flow, I would say, is um, uh, definitely quite good. Full marks. Feathering. That we'll have to assess later. Drying time. I would say is uh, definitely pretty good, not an extremely fast dryer, but definitely not too wet either. And then we have waterproofness. Now that's an interesting one, because um, this is wiped out. I'm not giving you the finger, by the way. I'm sorry, I'll do this. Um, uh, this is wiped out, and this is pretty much still there, but I obviously used a bit less water there. Um, and that is kind of legible too, so I, I, I don't really want to give this full marks. Then again, this writing, pretty much, you know, nothing happened. Um, so I'm not really sure what to make of that. Um, and that's why I'm going to take the cowardly thing and just give it a middle score, because it's a little bit of both, huh? Alright, I think we need to move to another type of paper, and that's what we're going to do now. Alright, copier paper. Now, let me see what we can get going there. Let's start with a bit of fine writing.
what do we got here? Is that a hair? Get out of the way. Thank you. All right. A bit of fine writing. Copy of paper. Fine. The drunk brown fox had another crate of Bordeaux. Medium. Bordeaux. Broad. Italic. And finally, flexification. <coughs> oh, I had to sneeze. Thank you. Now, what you have here, perhaps I should uh, ask the professor if he can explain this, because I think... Sorry, Taki? Yes, could, could, could you come over here for a second? Yes, thanks. Uh, could, could, you, uh, could you try to explain the viewers what we see here? I mean, you're, you're such a great artist, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're, you know, your knowledge of art can, can definitely help. Oh yes, absolutely, you see? So what you see here is, is quite simply a fox. Obviously, you see the fox, you have the tail, you have the beak and the whiskers. Uh, everybody knows a fox has whiskers and a beak. And what you see here is a bottle of Bordeaux. You see, that's Bordeaux. It's quite probably something from 1927. I see that clearly. And um, it's, I, I'm, I'm a great phenologist, you see. After, I'm, in, in addition to being a penologist, I'm also quite a, 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 a venologist. You see? Yes. So, um, this is a fox that is having a drink of a bottle of Bordeaux. It's quite obvious. I think everyone can see that, but I'm glad that you acknowledge my expertise in, 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 in ascertaining these kinds of things. And, and just so you know, you see? Oh well, yes, thank, thank you, Professor. That was, that was extremely illuminating. Um, I have to say that was exactly what I was trying to draw. Clearly the Professor and his great intellect immediately recognizes these sorts of things. Now, I think we have to do one more thing, and that's a little bit of bold writing. Fox. All right. Now, what? Whoops. Sorry. What do we make of these um, these things? Uh, I really see no feathering. Not even in the wet, broad nib. Um, I do see feathering in the wettest bit of the flex. Um, 
very fat writing, little bit of feathering in the very wet spots, but it's not very pronounced. Uh, it's a very well behaved ink. As to bleed through, definitely some for the flex writing, for the fat writing a bit, but mainly, ma sorry, mainly for the um, um, flex writing and the bold writing just a little bit, but that's that's very controlled. Now, as to the um, Rhodia paper bleed through for the brown benchmark and some of the tests but the writing not really uh, and I really don't see any feathering there either so to finish up the scorecard um, I think we can safely say that bleed through um, well you know what I'm going to give that full marks I mean it's only with with super wet flex writing on copier paper the rest seems to be very much under control uh, and feathering, uh, I would say, is the same thing. I mean, it's not that it doesn't feather at all, but with such a wet line on copier paper, that's, that's bound to happen. That means that we have a total inkage score of 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 8, 10. Ba -da 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 -da. All right, now, final test is... We have here R and K Alt Bordeaux and first I thought we should uh, I came up with Ackermann Simplicity's Violet, but that is way too purple. Uh, I'll, um, you know, I happen to have that in this vintage Waterman, um, and it may look good in, at first sight, but it is too dark and purpley. So that is not a good comparison. As I said, I found it very hard to, to do find a good comparison, but in the end I thought, well, you know, Bordeaux, grapes, wine, maybe we should have a look at Mont Blanc, Burgundy, right? Which is definitely a bit more reddish, I think, um, but you probably see why I chose this one. Uh, it's a nice ink, it also has some nice shading going on. Uh, and it's, I, I think that is, well, th as far as I know, th this comes closest. Now there are probably other inks that are better matches, but I really couldn't think of anything. So, uh, if you have any great comparisons, then do let me know. But for now, I think this is it. So, I hope this was useful. Rohrer und Klingner Alt Bordeaux. I've always been very pleased with the r &K inks. I hope this was useful, guys, and uh, I'll gladly see you next week. Bye-bye.